all living organisms found on Earth, and this includes both eukaryotes as well as prokaryotes, need three different things to actually survive and grow. And these three things are energy, carbon, as well as electrons. Now, why exactly do our organisms need these three different things? Well, basically, they need energy to power the different types of processes that take place within that organism. They need carbon to create the biomolecules used by those organisms, and they need electrons to basically undergo oxidation reduction reactions that are used to create different types of molecules. For example, if we examine the human body, humans need uh, energy to basically power different types of processes. And one particular process is basically the creation of, electro of an electrochemical gradient on our nerve cell. And that creates an, an action potential that propagates and sends electrical signals. Humans basically need a carbon source to create different types of biomolecules such as our proteins that are used throughout the human body. And humans need electrons to basically create ATP energy molecules, our adenosine triphosphates that are used by the cell. So we see that all these three things are needed by humans but are also needed by every single type of living organism that exists on Earth. And because these three things, energy, carbon, electrons, are needed by all the organisms, we can categorize organisms by how they actually obtain these three things. So we can categorize organisms by how they obtain their carbon source, we can categorize organisms by how they obtain the energy source, and we can also categorize organisms by how they obtain their electron source. So let's begin with carbon. So basically humans are examples of heterotrophs. Heterotrophs are those organisms that must obtain their organic carbon source from an outside organism. For example, we have to obtain our carbohydrates, proteins, as well as lipids from other types of organisms. So that's exactly why we need to eat food products, animal products, as well as plant products to obtain these organic carbon containing things. So humans are examples of heterotrophs. We obtain our carbon source from other organisms. Now the other side of the spectrum are autotrophs. Autotrophs are examples of organisms that can actually create or synthesize energy containing carbon molecules, organic molecules from inorganic starting materials such as carbon dioxide. So the prime example of autotrophs are plants. Plants are basically able to use inorganic carbon dioxide, mix it with water to actually form the carbohydrate sugar molecule. So that's an example of autotrophs. Autotrophs obtain their carbon source from inorganic materials, while our heterotrophs need to obtain the organic carbon from other organisms. Now, let's move on to our energy source. So once again, let's use humans as our example. Humans are examples of chemotrophs because they basically obtain their energy source by breaking down macromolecules such as sugars, lipids, and proteins. We basically store that energy in molecules known as ATP or adenosine triphosphate. Now, the other type of molecule, the other type of organism that basically uses light as the energy source are known as phototrophs. So basically, plants are example of phototrophs because they use the energy stored in light to basically synthesize carbohydrate molecules. So they combine carbon dioxide, our inorganic carbon source, with water, and by using our light, they synthesize our carbohydrates as well as oxygen. So phototrophs are those organisms that use light as their energy source to power the different processes inside that organism, while chemotrophs obtain their energy by basically
basically breaking down or oxidizing either inorganic or organic matter. In the case of humans, we basically oxidize our organic matter. We oxidize our macromolecules such as sugars, lipids, and proteins. Now, the final way by which we can categorize organisms is by the source of electrons. So those organisms that basically obtain their electrons from organic materials such as sugars, proteins, or lipids, and this includes us humans, these types of organisms are known as organotrophs while those organisms that obtain their electron source from non-organic or inorganic materials, those are known as lithotrophs. So basically we have the source by which we obtain our carbon. We have either autotrophs or heterotrophs. Autotrophs basically means we create or synthesize our organic molecules from inorganic starting materials such as carbon dioxide. Heterotrophs means to actually obtain that organic material, we cannot synthesize it, we have to obtain it from other organisms and this includes humans while this include plants. Now, the energy source can be broken down into two types. We have phototrophs, which only use light as the energy source, and for example, plants use light energy to synthesize our carbohydrates, while chemotrophs are those that actually obtain our energy source by breaking down or oxidizing either organic or inorganic matter. And finally, we can also categorize based on electron source. So we have organotrophs, which basically means we obtain our electrons from organic materials such as sugars, proteins, and lipids, while inorganic, while our organisms that obtain our electrons from inorganic starting materials, those types of organisms are known as lithotropes.